Hi, my name's Chris and welcome to my channel, Maverick Next Gen. For your buying an H2D, please consider these things. Things can go wrong and they will, but don't let you put that off having such an amazing piece of equipment, having completely no background at all in 3D printing. I want to share with you my experiences about the H2D. Long story short, I bought this back in April and I've had it for around six months now. And I, now I decided to go the whole hog and what I have here is the H2D, which is a big 3D printer, and I've got the AMS2 Pro, which allows you to print 3D models in different colors, which is fantastic. But there is a consequence of buying all this tech. It's not cheap. This amounted to about two grand UK pounds. And I was thinking when I was doing this is what if it doesn't work? What if it goes wrong? How much is it going to cost to keep? And, and obviously the other thing that I haven't done is printing. So how hard is it to print things? What if I want to create things? That's for uh, other videos to come. In a video where I'll link up here, I've made a video about me literally putting it together from scratch, which was done six months ago. And it's a bit of a learning curve. Again, this video is about what to expect in your first six months. I have a really small room, okay? It's about three, three meters by two meters. The, the unit is literally perched in the corner here. And this is my door to the outside world. And I've got a window that way. So really there's not much space for me to move around in here. I was really concerned about not having A, ventilation and B, not having much room in its maneuver. I would say that this door is about what? 80, 90 meters, sorry, 90 centimeters in width. And it opens up. So if we do that, let me just put that there. Can you see? If you get the right orientation, that door can open up. Anyway, point being is it can stay in a small room. It has um, cooling vents out here. So on the times when there is a lot of heat flow, you wanna open your window because there's gonna be a lot of venting going on. And again, that depends on the types of filament that you buy. Number one, newbies. No, this is really heavy. I think it's 35 kilograms, okay? So it's not for the faint hearted. I stupidly put it together by myself and lifted it. You'll see in the video where I go wrong. What you got to think about before you actually place this thing is A, where are you going to put it in terms of you need a room that is at least two by three meters. The reason why you'll be struggling is because in my video I show you that you need to move around the actual unit to have a look at the back and poke around, open the door, etc. All right. So that's number one. On that note, where you're gonna put it means, are you seriously gonna put it upstairs? I would recommend no, unless you have a second person to help you lift it up the stairs. Getting it to the room is very tricky and lifting it up onto a table is another issue. And step number two or something number two you need to think about is the, the table, the support. Now I thought, oh, it would be great to have a wheelie table, right? And in retrospect, I haven't changed the table. I think it's fine. And the reason why it's fine is because the clever mechanism of the, the printer, because it does calibration before it actually prints, even though it's wobbling, Bamboo Labs have done a great job. What I am saying though is, is that the table, whilst on wheels, you need to lock the wheels down. Um, the unit that I've got has got brakes, but I would, on second thoughts, recommend that the table is not like a printer table that's got a flimsy structure. It's got braces on it, so it doesn't move dramatically. And again, I'll show you in a video up there what it looks like when it's rocking away, but it doesn't affect the print. So that's number two. Number three is when you take the uh, box apart, there is a special little package like this that contains, your bits, okay? Little did I know there was a special, there were Allen keys at the bottom there, right? So I use my own Allen keys, but actually this box contains everything you need and what you'll need in the six months. Now, for example, this, six, this um, what's it called here? Lubrication oil will need to be used to lubricate the rods inside and I'll show you in the video, it's in there. There's three of them. Um, that's the smooth rods. And there's also lubricant grease for the, the screw rods that are either, and that also needs to be done. You'll get a warning during your three, um, your six months, you need to do maintenance on them. 
and that requires cleaning them using alcohol. Actually, that's the other thing I mentioned. You need to get yourself some of this alcohol, isopropanol alcohol. Okay, I'll put links in the in the description. So the other thing that you need when you're cleaning, you need a clean microfiber rags. Okay, you need a few of these. What else do you have here in this little box of tricks? Um, yeah, you, yeah, actually, I didn't know that. That's a bargain. You have a spare hot end. And that may come around when you're wanting to print different um, types of filament. For example, I will be printing with PIBA at some point, which is a new filament for printing a basketball. And then you've also got a, a cutter here as well, a filament cutter. The next thing that I think you need to know is that you'll need some elementary tools when servicing your H2D printer. Now, you will need some pliers of sorts, okay? So here's a long nose pair of pliers that I would highly recommend because you know what? Things will get stuck and you'll need to be able to reach inside the unit like so and just pull away things, okay? Of course, doing this when it's hot isn't, high, isn't recommended because you could burn yourself. Now, the, this is probably the most important thing. These are a set of wire cutters, okay? Now, the reason is, is because when you, when you get, have these filaments, as you can see in my AMS unit, sometimes the filaments, <laughs> there you go, this is another tip. Part of the filament in, in the roll is sometimes not uniform. What that means is it can stop a print. So you need to cut the filament off. And these, these wire cutters are fantastic for cutting things. Okay. The other thing that you'll need sometimes is a good older uh, kids. Don't try some Stanley knife. Okay. And the last thing I would recommend is tool heads, tool heads, there you go like this, you know, one of those boxes that got a kit of screwdrivers. Oh, sorry, camera over there. Now, actually, this is really useful, this one here. These are tweezers, pointy head tweezers, okay? That's something else that you need. This is all stacking up in the cost, right? So, filament, filament costs a lot, okay? So, roughly between 15 pounds and 30 pounds, depending on whether it's PLA, which is what I use for the most part. And, or I got pet and ABS actually. I've got a black ABS roll over there, at the back there. They come in a kilogram roll in general. So that's what you're gonna expect. I buy mine from the Bamboo Labs um, website because they have something called an RFID tag in already. And you can also get just a, just the a filament itself without the spool holders because it's cheaper. But the, the reason why I like the RFIDs is because it tells you directly, if I click that, you can't, you can't see, but anyway, on the AMS unit, it recognizes what kind of filament type it is and what color it is. So it automatically sets it up for you. You just print. Oh yes, of course, before I forget guys, yes. You will also need, I mean, this is too small for me now. This does, I've got more PLA in here. This is just a box that's got desiccant in it and it's airtight. You need one of these. Or you can buy those zip bags, which foolishly I haven't bought yet, but those are your two options, okay? For the most part, I leave my filament when open in the AMS with the desiccant in the hope that everything will be okay. What I have found, just for your information, is with the ABS, I have had some stringing. Another pro tip is that you will need to print a few things for your H2D. <laughs> right, at the back of the H2D unit is a hole, and that hole is there for when the filaments are cleaned from the nozzle and it ejects it through the back, a bit like an exhaust pipe. What I have in my hat is called filament poop. Now, you don't just want it dropping on the floor behind you. You want a chute that catches this stuff. So 
I went onto the Bamboo Labs Maker World, which is fantastic. That's the other thing, you'll need your you'll need to hook it up to your mobile phone. The app's called Bamboo Handy. What you want to do with this is something called a poop catcher. All right, so I have had lots of poop over the six months, okay? I'm gonna show you the first one that I printed. So this, I'll, I'll give you the links below. This is a, a poop shoot, but what it does, sorry, let me just slowly angle it, catches it here, comes down here, brings it to the front, and ejects it at the side here into this, see there's loads of poop here, into this other bit that I uh, created, a poop catcher. It's nicely uh, designed to fit in well with this. So here you go guys, goes like that, brings it around. So the other thing about this setup that I just have is I had to buy some round magnets. The the back of the H2D unit is, is magnetic. It just nicely fits on the back, okay? The other thing you'll encounter is that when you're printing from the unit, it has this USB at the top. When I first printed the Benchy, it, it gave me an option to say, ooh, time-lapse recording. And I was like, can't do anything, it was grayed out. That's because I didn't have a USB stick, memory stick or device. What I've done here is I've I've got a USB to SATA, S-A-T-A interface, and I've just got an old 256 gigabyte hard drive. So that works. You can have a, you can use one of these or you can just find a USB stick. To put it. Now you need one of those to record your time lapses, which is very useful because you can replay them, find out where things go wrong. That's the other thing. Now, in my uh, experience, what you'll find is, this, this is very important guys. If you're new to uh, 3D printing, this hotbed is the key to successful prints, okay? Now what I mean by that is, I'm taking this out, there are two sides to the textured plate, right? And I'm desperately holding onto it on the edges here because th this side, the top here is clean. That side at the bottom is five months old and I haven't cleaned it. So why, the reason why I'm telling you this guys is prints weren't sticking, they weren't working. I was getting really frustrated. So I Googled why are my prints not sticking or whatever. It's because the grease or dirt from your hands or from anywhere else is contaminating the print bed. So I just thought, okay, let me test that theory and swap it around and print again. And it absolutely works. So. You can't see it guys, but the, the grease from your hands when you're like touching it, it can stick to the hotbed and you just cannot see it, which is why when you do your next prints, even in PLA, you wonder why it doesn't stick. And the outcome of it is pretty severe. So this is just like a blue sheet that I tried to do, but if you look at it, it's horrendous. It couldn't stick to the bed because of the dirt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that underside of that or clean both sides and reprint that. And this is what happens, you see? It, it just spaghettiizes and, and just doesn't work. Search for a video where you, how to clean your, your print bed, your plate, okay? The other thing that you'll need are is a desk container. Now, again, I went on um, the Bamboo Handy app to find these things, and I'll leave a link. It's a very clever construction. In it, if I can open it from the top, I'm not sure if I can show this to you. Whoops, days. Uh, or orange desiccant beads at the moment. When they get hydrated, it goes green. Okay, now what is the purpose of this? So in here is a, um, tells you the percentage and oh and the temperature the percentage of how much water is in in the system of course the AMS unit i think can be used to dry things but the reason why i, pr I printed these out and i got a set of one two three four five little containers in there is that i'm i'm well aware that the the filament absorbs moisture right and apparently 
it's not good. Prints are bad and it goes all stringy. That's how I've understood it. So I just do that. The other thing you'll need when you buy more filament, okay, it's cheaper, like I mentioned, to actually buy filament without the spool holder, right? Because, ladies and gentlemen, you can actually print your own spool holders out. This one here, I'll, also, I'll put a link down below, is great because it actually has a filament holder bit. So if we can, if I angle that just here, I insert it. You see that? Amazing. Anyway. And that means you don't have to buy extra spool holders, you just print them. The other thing is Tescan beads. Okay, and I'll send a link, I'll put a link down there below. The theory is with Tescan beads, the ones that I bought, is that you can reuse them. And it's a real pain to reuse. Uh, I'll do another video, show it up here when I've done it. But it's very very dangerous because it involves putting the, the balls in the microwave and it gets really hot and bad things happen when things get hot. Anyway, suffice to say I have, I've just emptied now the, the desiccant balls and put in some new ones. For the most part, you will face errors in your first six months. I'll be amazed if you didn't. One thing that I have encountered, which was possibly my fault, is that I tried to print ABS and PLA using two different nozzles because you can, right? There is a setting in the Bamboo Studio Labs that allows this, but when you do that, you're at risk, and I have encountered it, of overloading your extruder motor, which is the big clever thing in the middle, which has um, two nozzles. That was a scary thing, and I had to take it apart. So that will be another video, but, what I will say in Bamboo Labs defense is there's there's two things. There's a great community, YouTubers of HDD printers have videoed this thing to death, which is amazing. But the actual um, instruction manuals to solve things on the Bamboo Labs site is phenomenal. Okay, so shout out to them. Thank you for giving me the confidence to read them and actually fix it at the same time. If you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them below and I'll try and get back to them. Otherwise, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more videos and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much. See you later.